a lot of the left will say, oh, don't say this word because that's offensive. Don't do that. That's going to hurt someone's feelings, which is bullshit. In a horror gore movie when I was a kid, you know, maniac gets the hook or chokes or cuts her throat. They were protesting that all over the streets. Misogyny, and, but it's art. When I saw you flip out on Tim Pool. You are that no, guy. I'm not that guy. You that is the first time I was like, he actually does have a crazy side. If he had got out, yo, come on. I, I would have knocked him it. the fuck out. That's my belief that the government has used Trump to create division. I think, but it's working. Well, I think it's even working on guys like you too in a different way. I'm not that cat that wants to like bring on big guests and, and give them a hard time. And I know you're saying it, it's- I'm not talking about a hard time, just basic, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But don't you think that today, when people argue about political disagreements, sometimes people say, oh, it was a it was a healthy exchange of ideas, but I don't see a lot of healthy exchange of ideas. I see people getting real mad. Like it, if it's an issue they're passionate about, you can get them real up in arms. And then usually in today's like tough, harsh social climate, someone isn't thinking like, well, he's a nice guy, but that's his point of view. They start thinking like, oh my God, he's a fucking retard. Like I hate this dude because of his beliefs. Yeah. You know, I never want to bring out that yeah, side of somebody. That, if you see that come in, then you could change it. But yeah. You could, you know. yeah, that's that's probably what I would do. Professor Griff, of all people, he was telling me, he's like, oh, no, don't be afraid to challenge me. Don't be afraid to speak on black issues. I'm like, hey, I'm, yeah. I'm walking on thin ice. Yeah, I was scared to meet Griff. That's what I'm talking about, too. You shouldn't be afraid to challenge anybody. You just, you know, you know there's people that are going to uh, try to bring that out because they know that's the clicks. Mm-hmm. But if you're not being fake about it, trying to, like, what can I say to kind of get him off kilter and crazy, mm-hmm. that, that, then you're being honest, you know. But to have an honest discussion, like, you know, that's what the podcast should be. I used to love watching you in the interviews with DJ Vlad, where you would kind of shut his arguments down. Mm-hmm. Five, six years back, we thought that mumble rap was going to be the permanent state of hip hop moving forward. And I remember people saying, no, it's gonna come and go and die like disco in under five years. And I'm so thankful that it did. It about ran from like 2015 to about late 2018 mumble rap. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, I know you said you have like a, you know, you have a decent rapport with DJ Vlad that it's nothing personal. And I'm a fan of disco, stop. I'm a Mumble fan of disco, disco too. Oh. Disco makes me feel good. 30, 50 years yeah. later, you know, uh, songs that were made before I was born, I still bump those mm-hmm. records. So, no, okay, keep no, going. No, 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 I yeah. feel you. Um, but I used to love watching your interviews with DJ Vlad because I'm thinking to myself, what is what is this dude's deal where he's in this fortunate position to be able to talk to the people that created hip hop? Oh geez, and then he sits with them and tries to convince them that this new stupid shit is actually great if you look at it from the right angle. And I'm like, I can't believe you're sitting with legends taking them through no, this. Well, that's 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 the world. Everybody thinks they're an expert. Everything. Everybody thinks they know more than the people that were actually there and saw it firsthand. Mm-hmm. That's the world. You know, I know more than everybody. Meanwhile, you wasn't there. You might have read an article. You heard a story you thought you liked that you don't even know if it's real or not, but it's real to you because you like that story. Yeah. You know. So so. That's that's the world. That's all the writers, people who write the history books. They they just I, well this that this that you know. Meanwhile, the people who were there, they'll eh, well that's not the the way I like to hear it. And yeah. Even though this person that was there is telling you this is what mm-hmm. the fuck we all saw, and you could have ten heads. That's why there's a hip hop historian called Jay Quan. He's out of Virginia, and and it's very rare because a lot of times when I listen to people talk hip hop or hip hop writers mm-hmm. or whatever or journalists, I'll be. I'll read their writing or hear their interviews, and I just want to correct them the whole time. Like that's wrong. That's wrong. That's not true. That right. happened before that. This is. But when a guy like Jay Quan, he respects the culture so much. I'll listen to him mm-hmm. and be like, "Holy! I learned." He's like one of the only guys I learn. Mm. He'll be like, "This record from this flip." I'm like, "Whoa!" So, so if you're into like hip hop history, this guy Jay Quan from Virginia, he really, really respects it and really documents it, mm-hmm. and he talks to, like, see. I wasn't there in, in 73, 78, 70, you know, so I wasn't there for that. And he talks to all of them and he'll take like 10 of the, the, their interviews and, and say, oh, this this actually, they all kind of are saying the same thing for this one. There's a little conflicting of here. Like he, mm-hmm. that's how he does his journalism and hip hop. And he's one of the best in the game. And and because he's one of the best in the truth teller of hip hop and tries right. his best to get the truth out, he's not one of the more popular yeah, guys. Yeah. They want, they'd rather have a Vlad or, 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 or this guy got shot at this party type of journalism. The red meat, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 what made you... Or, 
what made me bring that up rather is when you were talking about disrespect of, of OGs and, and, and disrespect to hip hop. That was the era where all the young guys were like, fuck Pac, fuck Big, yeah. you know, fuck the public enemies and NWAs. It's our time now. And you were always talking about how that has never been a thing. I loved your quote where you were saying, if you wanted to be a singer, you studied the great singers of the past. If you wanted to be a horn player, you studied the great horn players. That's why the 80s, you know, people say the 90s is the greatest era of hip hop, but I don't believe that. I don't think that's true because the 80s was the rawest, purest form when it was the closest to the real mm -hmm. roots and the kids in the streets uplifting their people. And every style that was done in the 80s was already done by the 90s. So every style you hear in the 90s, everybody did it already. Like if you listen to Nas, Tragedy mm -hmm. did that already. Mm -hmm. Rakim did that already. If you listen to, to Big, he was a, a descendant of that. Wu-Tang was a descendant of that. It was all kind of, there was nothing gangster rap schooly d was doing that in philadelphia like so i don't know anything in the 90s like yeah i guess production got cleaner and more money more budgets big bigger bigger videos bigger you know marketing campaigns but i think in my opinion and you know there, there might be another expert or, or historian that would disagree with me but i really believe that that most it most of it was done in the 80s already but then what happened is the disciples and the, and the babies and the children of the 80s came out yeah. and did all this great stuff in the 90s that people really love. Late 80s you know? for me is probably my favorite. Yeah. Late 80s. Yeah. Like, what was Nation of Millions? It was like 88? Yeah, yeah. Right? 88's the one, probably the you know most classic albums, you know. Yeah. From Slick Rick to, to Ultra Magnetic MCs, mm -hmm. Critical Beatdown. And I mean, there was so many Jungle Brothers and, and EPMD, Big Daddy Kane, Bismarcky, Cool G Rap. It was like, it was just MC Light. It was just mm -hmm. like the unbeatable era where there was so much greatness. And, and it was before all the money got poured into it. And, mm -hmm. and, you know, but what happened is in the 90s, they were marketing legit hip-hop to the masses and that wasn't happening in the 80s uh hip-hop was marketed to the black community in the 80s e even when it became crossover you know you know you had run dmc doing songs mm -hmm. with, with uh uh arrow smith etc mm -hmm. so you had a couple like that but like big daddy kane wasn't being marketed to the ice ice baby fans you know it was like a different thing now uh the last couple decades they want hip-hop if you if you're not selling to Taylor Swift's fan base, you ain't as good as the you know because you're some underground guy. That's not commercial crossover. Yeah. You don't make good records because you're not you know you're not bringing in like cash sale ones. incentives. Yeah. You know where back in the day, uh, Karis One didn't have to look at MC Hammer's record sales. You know it wasn't like it wasn't about record. No one would ever say, hmm, Public Enemy are they good? Uh, they they don't have the record sales of Van Halen though. You know <laughs> it was mm -hmm. it was it wasn't like that. You know. But but now it, they always bring up the numbers. Numbers don't lie. Yes, they do. Yeah. But Public Enemy's third album sold a million copies in like a week. Well, no, that was just, that, that Fear was, of uh, Black Planet. Yeah, yeah. There was a lot of hype behind that one, and that was after Fight the Power and the mm -hmm. Spike movie, and it, and it was it, it shipped it shipped a million seven days. Yeah, yeah. Let me just ask you real quick, not to cut you off, but since you brought it up, um, we were talking about the way hip hop was marketed. It wasn't mass marketed in the era you're talking about. In the NWA movie, there's a line where the cops got him lined up on the street. Jerry Heller says to the cops, or the Jerry Heller character rather, he says to the cops, um, these are artists. He's there are my artists. And the cop goes, what kind of art? And they go rap. And, he, and they go, rap is not an art. Is that actually how it was thought of in the early days? Yeah, but I can't, I can't take an NWA movie serious yeah. because NWA produced it and yeah. but don't put say this don't say that make us look good like and all of a sudden they're like we were like revolutionary no they were like uh, beat up women kill, you know and then all of a sudden it's like, it's like they were this pro thing but no shit no they had the one so fuck the police yeah, yeah, yeah okay fuck the police they were speaking for that voice but they act like they weren't like nwa was like really on some ignorant ignorant shit which i'm not saying nothing bad about yeah but there's a little bit of revisionist history where they you know where where Guys, they were like a shock value group. Yeah. But what about that line of that line of dialogue that like no, but hip hop's not an art form. It was so new, say by like you know eighty eight, eighty nine. It was it was the, it still is the newest genre. But at that time, it's like what fifteen years old, ten years old, if that. So was it was that yeah, the they, attitude? They, that's the attitude of anything that's new. Yeah, right. You know, okay. Rock and roll. That's not music. Mm -hmm. You know, that's that's historically <laughs> whatever is new. Uh, uh, a, a horror movie with too much blood. That's not art. That's not a real movie. You know, if you look at the history of censorship, they, they, they I mean, this. If you look historically in the twenties, thirties, forties, fifties, where they would get the censors abo aboard, you know, do they have the right to freedom of speech? They don't because film isn't art. That's what they said. But when movies, just movies, period, not even like 
wild movies, regular yeah. movies. They said they don't have the right for speed, freedom of speech because it's not an art. Mm -hmm. It's a selling thing. They're selling to the mm -hmm. public. So it's filmmaking is an art. And it, then years later, they had to fight for it to have a freedom of speech in film because it's not just an art. It's I mean, it's not just a selling point. It's, it, it is actual art. And if you look at this many court cases that took place they used to run in the movie theater take the film put the film film projector in jail <laughs> take the film like like that's historically no matter what it ever is when it's something new it's never and, and we do it too like i I'll, I'll go back to 25 years ago when when women's boxing first started mm -hmm. and, and i'm like yeah but should they be getting punched in the face i don't know this isn't really my you know and mma came and you go well they, you know, the fat guy remember because in the beginning of mma They'd have like the big fat sumo fighting 175 pound. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. yeah, it is more like a circus act, but it was it was legit. But you're not at first. You're like, this is something too new. Yeah, it, should it exist? You know, like uh, uh, you know. So, so we all fall for that sometimes. Not, not not all of us. At least I know I have this that. But so when something like hip hop comes out, yeah, you got these old wrinkly dudes, Keith Richards and the Rolling mm -hmm. Stone, like they just say, bro, that's not real music. And Kiss, uh, that's not real music. They don't uh, play yeah. instruments, you know? Yeah. But 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 Stevie Wonder, when he was sampling stuff, was that music? Of course it was. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But when, when some street kids sample, all of a sudden it's not music, you know? They're just talking, you know? So uh, yeah, the, 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 historically it, it'll never change. And whatever the next thing is, they go, "That's not real art," you know. Mm -hmm. And porn, that's not art. That's just pornographic. It's it's you know who is to decide what's art and what's not. Who's the the be all end all the bearer of truth? Mm -hmm. This is what art is, and because mm -hmm. I say so, <laughs> who, yeah. who the fuck is that guy <laughs> or girl or whoever? <laughs> you know. Well, some porn is art, and some porn is just people fucking on an iPhone. Some porn, some porn has an artistic angle. So you're the guy. <laughs> I'm what to decide. Guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I said Why not? decide. Yeah, but that. Yeah, but good thing you don't have an authority, mm. because if you had the authority to tell that's art, this one's not, this one isn't, yeah. this one isn't. Like, 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 we all think we're the ones that know better than everyone else. But when they're making porn on an iPhone for for Pornhub or OnlyFans, I don't think that they think they're making art. I think the directors in porn that are like, we're going to shoot this cinema, it's going to have a story, and you frame it like a movie, and there's subtext, I think that they're thinking like, so, okay, this so is... So was Deep Throat art? <laughs> Deep Throat isn't... That's a feature of porn yeah, film from the 70s, art? right? It's probably more art than what you see most, on Pornhub most, today. Most people... In that era, we'll go, that's not art. That's just pornographic footage. Mm -hmm. But it had a... By that standard, by the, of the standards of the time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah. I'm saying the standards of today, maybe they'll look, oh, yeah, who the fuck knows? But I'm, but I'm saying back then, they go, oh, that's just a pornographic film. But now you look, there's a story. There's actors. The camera setups. They lit it. So is it art or is it or is it just a hardcore porn? Who, you know, that's all I'm saying. Or is no, I feel what you're holder? saying. No, I feel what you're saying, but I, I think that there's still today in the porn industry an aim by certain productions like we're going to make this one artistic and then other ones were like, okay, let's we're fucking film shoot. it. Okay, okay. Yeah, because so, of the way they block you, it like let, a movie. Let me ask you something. If Lala, my DJ, makes some kind of video clip of her goofing around with Reverie, they, they do these like little goofy things mm -hmm. on their iPhones where, oh, I'm getting chased and, and the feds are coming for us, right? Mm -hmm. But they, is that art? Because yeah. it's just some cheap shit they did in one second with their iPhone having fun. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So th is that less of art than someone being like, hey, put this in my ass on this video camera. And, 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 and you know what? I'm going to pretend that you're my stepmom. And th they're acting. You have the camera rolling. You have the light set up. And, and, I, and I'm not saying it's art or not. But I'm saying, where does it? Where does the line get crossed? I think there's not oh. between like not being art and art. I think if there's like something that's creative, I guess you can gauge like the level of skill on set art. But just because something's a little bit nah, different of I a quality, I disagree with that too. Because that you know there was a goddamn my, what was his name? The, the, the boiled angel. Frank Henelotta did a documentary mm -hmm. on the guy, and he was doing all this fucked up art in his in his like comics mm. and they arrested him he's the only guy that got arrested ever for drawing comics and um they said that's not art so they had to have professionals go in and say well who determined well the quality of the the drawings aren't artistic uh -huh. enough 
to be actual art. So it's not art. So they oh, actually that's had stupid, the, the court case. Yeah. But that's exactly what you just said almost. No, no, I'm not disagreeing with your point. I'm saying that for them to say the art isn't as good. I'm saying not saying if it's not art if it's not good, but saying you can compare two arts and be like, this one's a little bit better, one's a little bit lower. Yeah, quality. different not forms of art. art. But I'm saying it's like a lower form of art. So say if you had two porn videos, one's a full cin cinematic film, the other one's on an iPhone. They're both art, but you can just gauge which one. I like know exactly what he's saying, but, and I know what you're saying. But, but his comics were looked at as pornographic okay. and not really art. And if you want to go there, you go, hey, Da Vinci or, or, or you know, uh, mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Picasso yeah, yeah. next to this guy that makes these fucking weird pornographic, sick, you know, blood exploitation, bad, bad drawings. Mm -hmm. Who, who, you know, a lot of people go, that's not art, but it is. My my argument you know? was Da Vinci's is higher quality art and his is a different quality of art. Like yeah. his is like, yeah. So I'm saying you can gauge like, oh, that's not as artistic as this. But And then there's art. more traditional art and then maybe there's more freeform art. I think he's talking about the differences in creativity. I think what you're getting at is the way like take critics will be like, there are artistic pictures in movies mm -hmm. but an action movie can never qualify and then you look and you go but hold on a second if you take like even though people might say like an expendables movie is stupid you take five six guys all in battle at the same time a single on every one of them you're following six dudes six different kinds of combat then you put it all together each of them have a different fighting style each of them have a different like war pattern style so it's Art on some level, but the questionable. Yeah, art. yeah, but no, the, wait, it's not art. No, yeah, no, it is. But the yeah. critics will say like, no, there's like an artistic picture, and then that's just like fuck around shit. I think that's what you're getting at that it's all art. Well, yeah. well, 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 I'm just saying who determines what the quality level has to be. I guess the who critics think they do. Yeah, but they, they, they who the fuck are they? Yeah, yeah. I don't think. And, any, and, and take this, ahead. okay? You could take uh, uh, Avatar. The new fucking yep. four hundred million dollar avatar. Every yeah. shot is pretty. Blah 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 blah. blah. But and then take uh, Cassavetti's film where you know they don't have five hundred million dollars to make every shot perfectly beautiful. Digit boom boom boom. And you got shots that are dark and look like shit. And mm -hmm. and the performance is this. And the zoom <clears throat> wasn't what it needed to be. And this is out of focus a little more. And if you want to go, which is the professional art, you will go this avatar shit. Mm -hmm. But which one is the real art? Mm -hmm. Cassavetes mm -hmm. is telling a story and speaking from the soul and speaking from the heart. Mm -hmm. and, and, and some people would say that about Avatar. I watch Avatar and be like, jerk me the fuck off. Get me out of this movie theater. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> to me, I'd be like, that's not fucking art. But I'm, you know, obviously it is. But yeah. I, I, I watch art, Avatar or one of these big fucking superhero movies. I'm like, I'm like, this shit is bullshit. They gave $400 million for the same bullshit over and over again. I can't mm -hmm. look at it. I don't like it. I don't, you know, I'd rather watch something that was shot for $300,000 by a real motherfucking person with a small, tiny crew, even though it's more, they, that's amateur, that's lower quality to mm -hmm. some people. But it's not lower quality because it's. It, the it's, substance, it's, the value. Yeah. 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 So it, it's the same thing like you take Marley Mall, you know, would make these legendary fucking beats and rhymes and they're still listening to them 40 years later you know shan shante all of this shit B bismarcky uh kane all of this shit craig g had tragedy and he was making some of those records on a little eight track player in his fucking queensbridge apartment with no mm -hmm. studio and yes or take Dr. Dre's fucking ring, ring, wrong, ding, ding, ding. Yep. the fucking Marley Mall shit blows it out the water. But Dre has the fucking instrumentation and his clean mix. And it's that was a catchy hook, man. That hook is terrible. <laughs> I love it. You, you can't get it out your head. You start saying it for the rest of the that day. That shit is Keep terrible. your heads ringing. But, but um, yeah, so I, I, I'll i take a Marley Mall mixed out of the QB apartment that, so like, that sounds like hip hop. Over some like, look how perfect every little part of it mm -hmm. is. Ooh. <laughs> you, know, you know what I mean? So, so it, it, somebody could listen to Dre's record and go like, that Bismarcky record is lower quality. And then anybody that's hip hop be like, suck my dick, motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> you know. So it's the same dynamic of like, say, if a seasoned artist was in a. A, a shitty home studio and made an album or a record and a newer artist never made a song in his life having the opportunity to go in a beautiful studio with a beautiful producer and making a product that sounds like to the ear perfect but the quality of the art it wouldn't be as well as like a seasoned artist yeah, if that makes sense yeah that, that, that well yeah a and then you go to where people go it's all um opinion whoever thinks it is and this and that you know so like 
you could hear the worst song you ever heard in your life, mm -hmm. and you know technically it's terrible. Mm -hmm. Mix is terrible. The the artist on it sucks. All Lyrics shit. blow. And then there's fans that gravitate towards it yeah. and really love it and think it's like life changing. And they'll go up to the oh, you saved my life with this. And well, listen, that's the most terrible shit I've heard in my life. Mm -hmm. But. It's not to some people. So, you know, I, I used to think like, you know, you have to be this highest quality. And that I still hold myself in that for, for my own mental. Because if I put out some really mm -hmm. lower level whack technique and blah, 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 yeah. I couldn't live with myself. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people do. And they do a lot better than I do. <laughs> and they do a lot better than all my goats do. So it is what it is for who the fuck wants whatever. So you know? I got the perfect question to wrap up this segment. And then I want to talk about you. Is mumble rap art then? Yes, it is. No yes, shit. It is. Mumble. Yes, it is. Just yeah. hubba da hubba da hubba da. After yeah. that conversation, I mean, yeah. You think it's art too? In, in the topic of the conversation we just had where it doesn't matter if we like it or not, or if you think it's good or bad, like any type of creativity would be considered like an art. And, I, and, and see, this is me back to his, where he'll, he, he's, he's going to win the argument now because you go, which one's lower quality? And go, of course, the mumble rap. <laughs> and be, but you just told me who nobody can tell. You, you know what I mean? You, you know, the thing is, all right, I, I get that you're like an artist to your core, which is yeah. like be a little accepting of everything, that everything has some value to somebody. But then there's like the harsher side of me that's like, can we just call it what it is? You pin R.A. the Rugged Man and his lyrical ability against Little Yachty and like, what the fuck are we talking about? <laughs> then there's the, but, but I get I get well, what you're I, saying. But I agree with that. Yeah. But that's how I feel when I watch a Fellini film. Mm -hmm. And then you'll look at what's the top movies of that decade and I'll be like, I can't watch any of those. Mm -hmm. But a lot of them are still considered classics mm -hmm. that they people grew up yeah. on and they love those films. And I'm like, that movie's trash. Fellini is the god. Yeah. But I'm, I, well, Let's take Michael Bay, for instance. Michael Bay, may, his track record of box office is fucking tremendous. Not many people could compete. Scorsese can't compete with Michael Bay at the box office, mm -hmm. but whose movies would you prefer? We would go, of course, Scorsese, mm -hmm. a better filmmaker than Michael Bay. I wouldn't say Michael Bay is not art. I just say I prefer Scorsese. Yeah, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about art. quality levels. Yeah, yeah, you just yeah. said the little Yachty to Ari the yes, Rugged yes, Man. Yes, yes, yes. yes. And but that's the, but, but you take Michael Bay and Scorsese are both talented filmmakers, just very different. No, I don't. Yachty's think, I, nah, like nah, nah. I think I think Michael Bay compared to Fellini is fucking Yachty to mm -hmm. Coogee rap. So, yeah. I got one last question about that before we move on. And and actually, this is not me trying to like win the argument. This is a sincere question. A lot yeah, of people- And you're allowed to win an argument. I'm not going to win with you. I can, I can no, tell. No, you're allowed to. We're just having a conversation. Mm -hmm. Well, Savo has too much respect for his guests sometimes. So you could be like, yo, look, I disagree with you, motherfucker. No, sincerely with you, I, I can't see me winning an argument. You seem to me like the kind of guy that's like got a, you, you kind of have a counter to everything. Through old age, I learned to have perspectives of all sides of things. And a lot of times people go like, oh, he's too scared to say his, you know, because I'll go, but on the flip side, on the, I do that a lot. I go, but on the flip side, yeah. it's not me trying to, let me make yeah. sure both sides are in an argument. It's more like, yo, but my fucking point of view isn't 100. Somebody else has another point of view that might have a lot of logic to it, you know, just because I feel this. Somebody else might feel the exact same fucking, you know, thing on a different side of the argument. So a lot of times I do do that. This side, that side, that side. I always have a lot of those. But on the flip sides. Yeah, but that's smart because it doesn't limit you. So many people think they're they're so set in their ways that it Ooh. limits their 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 train of thought, their their like their growth in anything. They don't it, that's exactly and I went through that. Everybody goes through that where you go like this is how it is. Mm -hmm. And I was like that young in hip hop where like I came from it. I knew what it was. So I'd see certain things like like coming in the game and I'm like that's not hip hop mm -hmm. and I'd be stuck on and it. I love that perspective I can't front yeah. I am definitely more closed minded than you I am open to the things you're saying and, and I get what you're saying and it's nice to appreciate different things I'm not absolutely held in the box but to the core of who I am I'm kind of like I have the soul of a bitter old man because when new hip hop came in I loved binging the interviews of all the OGs that were saying fuck that that's not hip hop and the question I was going to ask you was even though I get your point of view that like all art is art to somebody there was a big hang up during the mumble rap era on the lack of preparation because we were used to artists that really cared for their craft. Mm -hmm. And actually, you used to talk a lot about that. That's like, you know, care for your craft. Don't just spit shit out. So you take like a 6 9 6 9 once bragged that like, you know, that verse that was on that Nicki Minaj song. I spit that out in two minutes. I put no effort into that and I don't give a fuck about it. So you could still say 
to the point of the argument, it's art to somebody because he still created something. People definitely got hung up on like the amount of time you take to perfectly craft a song, yeah. every word, versus someone that brags about the fact that they put no preparation into it. And then you look at the result. You put RA up against a 6ix9ine record. Yes, there's somebody out there, a lot of people out there that that may prefer it or, or like yeah, it. But, but but you're coming from the culture of hip hop where we, we respect the competition level. And you have to be, you know, to get on that microphone on the stage, it's, which is a good that's, thing. That's from that's from the hip hop culture standpoint. Yeah. If you're part of hip hop culture, that's what you do. You're a competitor, you know. But if you're, you know, the other thing we're talking about, that's a that's a pop record or that's a different yeah. fucking record that has nothing to do with my world. And the OGs, what I didn't like about what you're saying is, I remember the week that Black, and I've said this before, but the week Black Thought did that tremendous freestyle. That I think I know what you're gonna say. That everybody went crazy on yeah. the uh -oh. same week. Uh, tech, no, no, what's his name? Six Nine yeah. did the fucking did like this thing in his hotel room where he spit like this thirty second terrible rap mm -hmm. terrible and it was him trolling he knew it was terrible mm -hmm. but he knew it would get clicks and he posted it and way more than the black door freestyle i saw on my timeline all my ogs going like this is him what this is what the fuck it is and they were all posting how terrible this guy was this fucking oh you're, you're saying they got trolled yeah they got okay. trolled yeah. so they fell for it and, and every my whole timeline for like fucking a week straight was look at this terrible this guy can't rap yeah. this guy can't rap i'm like yo he did that on purpose and Post that Black Thought freestyle, motherfuckers. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? No. So, so, so he doesn't have to be part of my universe. Right. I don't fuck with him. I don't think anything that he does is, is near to what the fuck I fuck with or the universe I'm from. So that's what I'm saying. You know? No, I feel it. I Don't get me wrong. I make myself seem more closed-minded than I am. Who I am as a person, I'm open to things. And I don't like try to press my point of view or, or put my point of view on anybody. But at the heart of how I feel about hip-hop as it existed when it was born... I have like the soul of a bitter old man. I really would prefer that hip hop sounded like late eighties, early nineties to the end of time, honestly. Well, well, but there I, is a lot of fans like that. Well, what I do is I, I try to make music, uh, the golden era on steroids, you know? Mm. So I keep it. That's a great explanation. I, I, I keep, keep it where like say hip hop continued in this, this is what it would be like in 2023, 2024. That's how I make my music. To call a spade a spade, I would be like, mumble rap is not rap but to be more open-minded i used to say if i was forced to be more open-minded in these arguments i had throughout the mumble rap era with all my friends and everybody that liked it i would say fine we can say it's a form of music we could say it's a form of art but can we just call it something different because if when we say rap i think chuck d i could never put lil yachty in the same lane so can we call it something different and i think that's why people came up with the term mumble rap I, yeah I, I just did you know the guy Torre, the political not, not the rapper the political commentator uh i just did his podcast two days ago in new york and so i'm repeating something i said there okay. that's right, right now but there was uh there was a time when i was when i was a kid and you know Don Cornelius from, mm -hmm. from Soul Train. You yeah. Know, we'd watch yep. Soul Train, and Soul Train was like one of the only programs where you get like black music and all of this stuff. Yeah. And then, you know, so his program was legendary. And he came up on, you know, Stevie was on his show, Michael Jackson was on mm -hmm. his show, uh, Al Green, all the greats from, from the great era, all the Philadelphia Soul was on his show. And I remember being like 12, 11, 13, watching the show. And when New Edition and Public Enemy and Rakim would come up to the show, you could tell he thought he was better than them. Mm. He was from a better era in his mind. Like, he's, like, looking at Rakim. Meanwhile, Don? Yeah, Don Cornelius. Oh, okay. The, the, and so he had the God MC on there, and he kind of looking at like, hey, my, you know, cool. You know, yeah. it, it wasn't like where, where the average person would have Rakim on the show. Be like, yo, oh, Rakim shit. is here. Your New Edition is here. It was more like, hey, I think Don liked Positive K. He seemed to like him when Paz was on the show. Paz had his big record in the 90s. Mm -hmm. It was what, 92 or 3? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 91? What yeah. Year was it? 90, 92, I think. Okay. So you already going, uh, that was already six years of rap being on the show. So he. he oh, so you got a little bit more used to it. Yeah, he got, okay, okay. This is, these are the big hit records for this time. You know, I think when it was first, like, yo, you need these young, you know, mm -hmm. uh, I think in the 80s, it was a little different, you know. Like me, you like fun rap. You can appreciate fun rap. Yeah. You know, like the stuff that it's it's not hard. There's not a, there's not a message in it. It's not aiming to be threatening. Like, like Positive Case, is, he's one of my favorites. And he's like, that's just, that's just fun, yeah. easy music. Step up front. Tell my mom and 
single month. I fucking yeah. love that record. <laughs> or uh, or what's good that? combination. Start it up, y'all. Start it up, y'all. Yeah, that's yeah. a yeah. fucking yeah. great yeah. one. Yeah. Milk D yeah. and MC. That's a, that's an underrated posse cut. MC Light. That's Milk a D fucking and great and one. Case. Start it up, y'all. Yeah. Start, that was a really great one, and nobody heard it because you know why nobody heard it, really, right? It, that that's if I'm not mistaken, is is that? On audio two second album, yeah, it is. Okay, that's why. Or I don't know about the second album, but I know it's on an audio okay, two that, album. That, well, that's why because there was a, a lyric uh, on uh, audio two second album on a song called uh, "What You Looking At," and he said, yep. he, said he said, "What you looking at? Uh, are you gay? I hope that's not the case. Cause gay mothers get punched in the face." Oh he's, shit! He's, he's like, uh, I see them uh, in the village. Uh, like meat on some maggots, word to gives. I hate faggot. You know. Mm. Oh so God. so. But was that hardcore for the time? Well, at the time there wasn't internet yet, so the fax machines at Atlantic Records, because it was a major record. Yeah, record yeah. Major, yeah. Uh, uh, they they, they, they kind of canceled. He got canceled for that. Mm. The, the album got canceled. They stopped damn. They canceled it. back then. Yeah. Well. Well. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't that wasn't the term it's back then. Not like appropriate. The fax machines no. blew up. Yeah. Boom, boom. There was mm. death threats. All of this stuff. Mm. And, and the album kind of they said, okay, we're, we're done with this album. So that was on that album, if I'm not mistaken. So that's why you never had a video for it or promotion for that song. Mm. Yeah. And it's a really underrated song what's your favorite song to perform live and why uh because i remember being 12 years old and being at your show i actually took uh the cord the the white uh red and yellow cord out of the back of my tv and uh, i think the boys were were uh opening up with with red and stuff and i kind of snuck in because i wasn't old enough to get into your show so i threw a bunch of cords over my 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 back and then i had a camera bag and i snuck in and i was like i'm the cameraman i gotta get in there and film and stuff <laughs> But yeah. You just admitted to him that you didn't buy a ticket. But we were opening. Oh, I don't. You, we were opening, you, you though. You jerked the promoter, not me. I, got, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I actually do that if you can. Just everybody steal your tickets. I'm cool. <laughs> just pack the house out. You know, so, so. Well, they wouldn't sell me the ticket because I wasn't old enough. So. But uh, yeah, what is your favorite song to perform? You know what? I, it all depends what type of crowd it is. That's you know, what you're if, say. If, if I'm in front of like a rah, rah, rah crowd. Mm -hmm. Like right now, when I do uh, uh, Dragon Fire, you mm -hmm. know the yeah. song with G Rap and, yeah. and Master yeah. Killer and, and and Ghostface, like it, it's it's like got kind of like a, a live. It is a live. It's not kind of. It's a live band going crazy on it, mm -hmm. and it's high energy and it's up tempo. So right now, that's off the latest album. So if I want rah rah shit, mm -hmm. and I put that on, we go Killer Glocks and, and the Ghost first. Then I come on, uh, you know, uh, uh, Eyes Wide Shut, Masquerade, Got Wild Dancing. I'm in the mosh pit at the Rothschild Mansion. Mansion. Cool. Mm -hmm. You know, so so. They go crazy for that with the energy right now. Yeah. You really must have to focus on your breath control for the fast one. Oh, yeah. Stuff, right? Well, I got super lungs, man. Yeah. You know, I, I don't really, you know, like I used to think, well, put the fast flow one early in the set because by the end you might be winning. And then I started throwing, ah, put it at the end. And I'm like, yeah. oh, I'm fine. I could do it. So as the story goes, and I don't know if even you guys know this because young guys, I'm sure you know, and this was my experience finding you, not knowing anything about where you came from when I found your music, and you know, finding all the YouTube music videos and everything, I'm like, oh, he's a completely independent guy. I figured kind of like a Hobson. I figured like you started independent. Then I look into your story, you were supposed to come up the traditional route, right? You're coming up with guys like Biggie and you're coming up with other legends before any of them are big, and the labels are really enthusiastic about you, right? So you were supposed to make it the traditional way, signed to a label, and I believe as the story goes, you gave the labels such a hard time that they didn't want to work with you anymore and it forced you to go the independent route. Am I missing anything? Well, well there was no way except the traditional way back then. You're right. You're talking about 92. I was a kid. You know, I was a teenager. And uh, I got a bid in war. Every every label wanted me because, what? well, you know what happened? I, I shot my demo and a couple people was, was interested. I got a couple of deals, but it wasn't crazy. It wasn't like a crazy buzz. And then what happened is, you know, because A and Rs, they don't know what the fuck they're talking yeah. about. Yeah. But then what happened is, I was in the studio and it was like, all these dope, legendary, respected rappers were there, and I used to carry my boombox around and have my tape in it, and they were playing the, my tape in the studio, and everyone was like, "Yo, who the fuck is that? Who the fuck is that?" And I'm like, "That's me." And it was like, "Yeah, bullshit," because you know it wasn't white people rapping yeah. me at all. Yeah. I was, you know, I was. You know, and I was better than so many people. So it was like, uh, and that's not me hyping myself. I'm just saying what Sounds it was right. at the time, yeah, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so so they was like, what the fuck? I'm like, that's me. Like, yeah, bullshit, bullshit. So they take the tape, put it on the big speakers. And uh, and there was an A&R in there that day. So w once they seen the artists reacting like that, they, they listened to the streets. Mm. And the streets was like, yo, this dude is incredible. Mm -hmm. So then that day I got a deal at Mercury and Giant 
on the same day somehow or mm-hmm. something. And then, and then from there it was like, then then uh, the lawyer started getting all these calls. Hey, Jive wants to meet you. Def Jam wants to meet you. Mer- yeah, uh, um, uh, uh, it was fucking nine of them. Uh, Tommy Boy wants to meet you. Like it was every label wanted to meet me because they saw all the rappers going crazy over this kid. So that's how that happened. And then, but at the time, traditional, there was no internet. You forget. Yeah. Like I said, Milk D was getting fax machines at the label. That's how he, right. he didn't get Twitter. But, Twitter, like, did you hear what he said on his new album? <laughs> right. Like, it was like they were faxing. Like, so there was no traditional route. You had some independent guys like selling records out the trunk, uh, selling selling oh, records right. out the trunk. Hitting me. But no, nah, it's all good. Yeah, don't, don't be easy on your brother. <laughs> Sorry. He's professionalism, the guys. Fuck professionalism. <laughs> but no, you got, no, we are in a flop house. You had go rappers ahead. selling records out the trunk type of thing. But if if that happened, they would go sign to a major. Mm-hmm. Every big rapper I can think of loves and respects you. And I was wondering if you think that's because everybody had to play the game with the labels, but nobody really wants to. So the fact that you were the dude that was wild enough to start telling labels to go fuck themselves and their stories about you like shitting on desks and record label facilities and things like that. Like, do you think that a lot of the other big hip hop legends that came up around that time thought like, we've all wanted to do that, but he was the only one that had the balls to do it. And it cost them, but fuck, we've all wanted to tell a record exec to go fuck themselves because they're fucking with our art. They're trying to control our art. Well, I I don't know because I think it's more the longevity because they all, even when I was getting like kicked out of places and banned from places, they would still all be like, yo, I'll raise that dude. I'll raise that dude. I'll raise a dude. But I would still get calls like, yo, dude, like you got to play the game a little bit, boy. You got to play the game. Yeah. Not from other rappers. Yeah, from other rappers. Mm-hmm. No shit. Like, yo, dude, you're, you're throwing, you, got, you got this opportunity. You're throwing that shit away. You got to play the game, dude. The, the, and, the, and the guys that played the game got very, very rich. And me, I'm like, fuck the game, fuck, the, uh, I, I'm, I'm real, fuck that. I'm gonna tell them if they should come up to my session, I'm gonna say it. But everybody wishes and, they could be you when they want to have a 20 track album, and the record labels like, not nah, that's 12 track album. And then 30 years later, they got 10 million. I'm like, I wish I could be them. <laughs> nah, 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 nah. <laughs> nah. Now that I got kids, I'm like, did I fuck up kids? I could have had you guys not because you, nah, you nah. not because what you've done independently is amazing. Nah, I, I I'm just. The, yeah, well, the other thing you. that's funny about me finding you late in your career because I'm a young guy is, I, to be honest with you, and this is no disrespect, but to be honest with you, for the longest time, R.A., I did not even buy the fact that you were a wild character. I'm like, this dude, he talks about politics, he goes on political networks, and he makes heartfelt records for his kids, and, yeah, and I thought it was an act at first. No, but like, you got to understand, you know, you're 17. Mm-hmm. years old and everybody's licking your balls yeah 18 years old everybody's licking your balls 19 years old so it does get to your head mm-hmm. you know yeah and, and i come from a fucking insane family and crazy fucking <laughs> As everybody surrounding me you know like my surroundings was crazy yeah. motherfuckers and killers and wild people so you know uh uh and you're a teenager so you're thinking like Yo, I'll fucking murder somebody. <laughs> you know, so so it's a different time. Yeah. So then to life and to experience. Um, yo, I still have the short fuse shit and I try my best. But 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 I have this thing where like, you know, I go from zero to one thousand in one second and I try my best to like like they want to medic. They've been wanting to medicate me for thirty years. They say you got you need medication. But I, I'm like, look, if I live through the experience and just keep rocking. Uh, you know, and I think in the long run, it's turned out good because I don't I don't go too crazy, you know. And I learned to like, hey, somebody said something ignorant. Mm-hmm. Somebody tried to push a little too much. Don't hit them with a bottle. Don't pull a gun out. Mm-hmm. Just chill the fuck out and get to your next show. Get to yeah. your next show. I'm Wait on a for four, like, like I'm I'm on a 45 city show right now, right? Tour 45 cities. So if you're doing 45 cities, you know. That somebody's gonna say some ignorant, stupid shit somewhere. Yeah. Now the old ego comes in, and you go punch this motherfucker in the face now. <laughs> and then you go, yeah. Then that venue's not gonna have you back. They're gonna fucking have the cops here. You're going to jail. You're gonna miss three shows. Your kids are sitting home away right. from you, and you're fu- so 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 you go. That's a drunk asshole. Yeah. Right. You gotta sometimes. And you know what's crazy? When I was a kid, my father used to say, he said, "Yo, like." Sometimes the big, the 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 more, the more brave man knows when to keep his hands in his pockets. 
you know, and, and uh, the, the brave man, keep, you know, knows when to walk away. You know? And that's so, coming from a dad that was literally like Rambo. Yeah, he was a killer. He was a right? literal killer, you know, and he was, I was there. He'd go, somebody did the laundry wrong. He'd destroy the whole fucking laundry mat. The cops <laughs> would handcuff him, throw a big dad. You know? Yeah, so, <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I see my dad lose it a lot of times. But the last 25 years of his life, he kind of just was calm and cool. And, right. And right in the head. And, and I feel like. I'm trying my best to be that for the yeah. last 20. I got kids now. But they've my kids seen me lose my temper in the streets and shit. Yeah. I, I, you know, and, and that's not right. They don't need to see that shit. But I'm way better than I ever been in life where like I, 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 you know, I still have it, but uh you know, and and I don't want to medicate myself. Definitely. Yeah. Like but what happens is now when I lose my cool, I get sad and depressed afterwards. Mm-hmm. You get disappointed in yourself. Like, Damn, you fucking you're fucking grown ass man. You did that. And then I call the psychiatrist, and they're like, I oh, tell you for 30 years, medicine! Yeah. You know, and, and then, I was telling you since your second record. Yeah, yeah, so, 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 you know, and then my boys be like, yo, all you gotta do yeah. is medicine, and your shit will be right. And I just, I never do it. I don't know if you realize how well you come off with your, with your on-camera presence when you're just chilling and talking. For the longest time, because there's so much persona in hip-hop, I was like, this dude seems like an educated, reasonable, chill dude. And I was thinking the whole, I'm a wild, degenerate, crazy. Like, I thought that it might have just been a hip-hop act. When I saw you flip out on Tim Pool, yeah. that is the yeah, first, the first time I was like, Oh, I see it. He actually does have a crazy side. Now, granted, I think it was warranted. No, but that was a PG crazy side. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, that was PG. Well, even the PG the, the first yelling, time yelling, I seen oh, you lose your cool. No, no. Can I tell you? Yo, that was PG. Yeah. Because I did lose my cool, and as soon as it happened, I realized it, and I looked at his face, and he was so scared. Yeah, we like, saw that, too. Like, I was you like, see it in I, his I, eyes. I was, like, I was like, yo, like... I'm being a bully right now or something, because he was like, "Yo, yo, you know." And, and you I, said you want to get you know, fucked up, but 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 if 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 he had got out, yo, come on, I, I would have knocked him, him the fuck out. out. Yeah. But he, I'm like, yo, I'm above that now, man. Like you, you don't just, you know. I see he. Okay, I will get up, I'll fuck you up. Let's fight. And then he's chilling, like, yo, chill, dude. Uh, I'm like. You know, you know what I mean? So I'm, that's part of my mature. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so you're saying that's crazy. That didn't look crazy to me. But I'm that, saying that, it's that literally. Like I, lo- I lost my cool. But yeah, but I'm saying that's literally the only time I I saw that side of you that you described in your music. Prior to that, I that thought like it, I thought like maybe that it's just that. That was that was easy. <laughs> but man. but you know what? You know what's... I went it's super easy on the guy. Like like I'm oh, glad oh, you but, checked him, dude. He's just. Yeah. But you know what's funny? Out. But you know what's funny, Ari? I, I know you put out an apology and everything, and you know you did what you could to keep that under wraps. But when I watch that clip, I think to myself, this is the problem with these political commentators. They live in this damn world where we get so damn heated about politics because that's just what we do. That they're not ready for a moment like that where you start. Start yelling uh, at another the man. Problem, the problem is, he, and you don't know someone what somebody's gonna tolerate and not tolerate. The, the problem with that was that uh, there's a guy Luke Radowski who came to Germany and he interviewed me and there's a, a, a site called We Are Change. Mm. And I used to watch some of his videos. He'd be like campaigning. Yeah, he'd interview David Ike and I, I like yeah, him. all this stuff. And and and, and Luke, I kind of thought he was on the right side of the team, you know. And so he invited me to Tim Pool. And I didn't know too much about Tim Pool's history. I didn't know he's like a pathological liar type and makes up agendas Mm -hmm. and fucking lies to his people. I thought, okay, okay, he's part of Luke's thing, cool, cool. So I didn't know enough about him. Then I went in my hotel room that day, said, okay, let me watch a couple clips. And I seen him, you know, defending cops, killing black men, defending... Ahmad Omri's murderers, like, well, they he tried to grab, the, like, yo, come on, man. He defended Derek Chauvin. Yeah, he, all of that shit. So that, shit. So, and then he was lying about shit. He's like Ahmad Omri. He he was the only one in the building. And it, like I made a documentary. Uh, yeah, but he li- he was lying about stuff. Either that or he wasn't informed. He was either lying or wasn't informed. So then I'm like, I'm like, wait, like I'm trying to be calm and cool here, and the guy's kind of lying to my face, or is he misinformed? And now I'm confused. I'm, I'm like, my guy Luke is a good guy, right? But then Luke starts talking like, oh, the white savior complex. I was like, yo, you're on that white supremacy talking point shit, bullshit. Like, come on, man. So now I'm like getting a little like weird. And then, yeah, he starts talking about motherfucker. Like this little nerdy guy. <laughs> what's his name? Uh, 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 the guy who show pull. Uh, motherfucker. 
And I'm like, yo, dude, keep your voice. Like, I wasn't. You, you I'm are not, that guy. I'm not trying to be, but he didn't know what that meant. Yeah. Because because yeah, the no girl, the, the who's the little white girl on the show? She was like, she's like, I don't but know you nothing about guy. it. I know he's, nothing about his show. She's the one who said, you are that guy, thinking that it meant like because he he there's this fake fucking thing that people made up like where it's white racism. People hate white people. White race right against white people. Like there's this big fucking like. Because they know that's how you get more yeah. subscribers. Yeah. Anti, it's anti-white. Oh, CRT is going to get your children. So they, they, they. That's their viewership. Yeah. So they're saying like, you're racist because you think black people deserve. You know, it's like, yo, like you're racist against white people. That that's saying this white man's here and I'm racist against white people. It's just so stupid. Yeah. And it's so ignorant. So um. So that's what I was dealing with. And then the guy starts talking like motherfucker. I'm like, Dude, <laughs> keep it down. Keep it down, and then the girl like, yeah, that guy, yeah, and 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 like I said, I have that little fuse, so I kind of yeah. did, yo. And then when I seen that he's just, I'm like, yo, don't 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 put hands on this guy. That's not comfort. He doesn't want. But what him. I'm what I'm saying is they they think they're so safe, and I think they become in denial about the fact that like you know, say what you want about like all, all the masculinity content and everything. One thing we can all agree with about the the temperament of a man and. Four men sitting right here like we know you don't just get out of pocket because you're talking political to an extent that exceeds like a respectful argument you might get hit in the face but I think they're so goddamn used to all these political commentators they're so used to these heated debates with characters like Piers Morgan and people like who it's their job to be professional you know they're never going to swing at you but you bring on a rapper of all people and think that like you're still in that safe world where you can really get out of pocket because that's what we do it's politics you really might get hit and so I saw a couple of people react to it and go like oh that was corny for him to get upset but the more times I look at it the more I'm like dude you bring no, somebody the, on the you're only yelling one, the at the only that. one who thought it was corny was like his weird white fucking fan base of corn I think so. yeah. nobody that, from the street cool. is like he says motherfucker to you and you say chill and he's like motherfucker you yeah. know you're gonna be like yeah. yo dude yeah. said you're a Shut racist the fuck up. Brick. Because he's never been checked. Yeah, he's racist never been against checked white people. Yeah. Meanwhile, that, that, that I looked at his videos. That, that his whole thing is based on white supremacy. His whole shit. You know, you hop in political conversations a lot. You talk about how you don't like Trump. Also, on the other side of the spectrum, years before Biden became president, you had a record where you said, if you ever want to see a true racist, take a look at Joe Biden. Yeah, look at um, Joe Biden's history. Of yeah. Joe so, Biden has a, a very racist history. And yeah. still says a lot of racist shit today. But we get caught up in these political conversations you know Trump, Trump versus Biden or the lesser of the two evils or the, or the right versus left but I would think somebody who's awake and aware of conspiracies and all the lies and everything that the government's done would not even hop in the conversation of it's the left versus right it's Trump versus Biden because oftentimes when you enter the conspiracy realm of conversation you know that like the presidents are kind of just puppets mm -hmm. so how do you differentiate the two? You don't. I can't. Yeah. And that's where people have a problem with me, you know, because I will never in life say vote for Biden, vote for Democrats. Mm -hmm. And I will never in life be like, vote for that Republican now. You know, it's like it's right. Like, so, so I don't know what to do. I'm not smart enough to figure it out because I, I know what you're saying. Like, yeah. Whoever runs the government was still going to be part of a perpetual war machine. They're not going to let somebody in office. That's gonna like all of a sudden change it all. Mm -hmm. You know, change is a nope. lie. There's no change in our government. Our government right. is gonna remain our government. Yeah. So it's a predicament where I'm like, and then I go vote third party, you know, okay, uh, Jill Stein, try her, I guess. You know, like I don't know. And they'll know. never make it. Yeah. Well, well, the problem with this thing is is that everyone has that mentality. Yes. So we kill it. You know, if if society would say, fuck the right and left, like you or not right and left, Democrat and Republican Party, mm -hmm. and somebody that blow Donald Trump and Biden out the water speaking mm -hmm. but who the, the media won't give them the platform mm -hmm. but they, if they could you know some some grassroots and, and say we do it as the people big up the and nobody posts about Donald Trump and Biden this isn't reality right now but if they if they say yo this third party people's out for the American people for real and we we ha put somebody up say they get 23 percent of the vote and they still lose then they're going to be able to get way more money for the next election. Yeah. You know, but right now we're like, well, we're taking away the 3 or 4% of the vote if we vote for them, and then you're going to let the guy on the Democrats or Republican lose because you're voting for this guy, so your vote doesn't even count. But if we can have some kind of campaign where we beef up the percentage, even if we lose, you know, third party, fourth party, whatever, 
then okay, look, we got twenty three percent of the vote. We we could have almost did this. Yeah. Mm. Fucking beef it up more, and then they got to th- then they get the half a billion dollars. They get the billion dollars, and all, all of a sudden, okay, somebody that's you know one of us could really be the fucking president. Maybe I don't think this will work, yeah. but I don't know. But like, we need to try something different because uh, there hasn't been one president in my lifetime that was ever for the people. Mm-hmm. Uh, can you name one? Nope. So 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 what do we do? We keep letting these fucking mass murderers fucking lie to us and 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 kill people all over the planet and and tax pay oh we don't we can't spend our tax on helping people because you know that's too much money who's going to pay for it but meanwhile we let them spend a trillion dollars a year blowing up fucking people all over the planet mm-hmm. mass incarceration you know the numbers 25% yeah. of the world's population is in america mm-hmm. uh, a prison population is in america 25% mm-hmm. of the world's prison population is in one country so you know so so they're acting like Oh, we're the greatest country in the world. We locked them with the land of the free. Twenty five percent of the population of freedom is here. Yeah. This shit ain't free, motherfuckers. But let me let me ask you this: Why not stop participating in all of that dialogue when we know it all stems from government lies? And like, rather take solace in our art since we talked about art so much because i don't know about you the more i have to listen to the back and forth the left versus right and the this versus that the more it's bringing me back to there was a time where artists were like i don't even want to get involved we bring people together through music and and don't you think it's better to bring people together through music than to even sit down and have these open discussions because like if you got a whole group of fans at your concert say half the crowd is on like one side politically half the crowd's on another side politically but they're all brought together because they're rugged man fans oh yeah i I don't think you should isolate you know democrat and republican no your republican can't come to my show your democrat can't come to my show i don't think we should do that either just like if you find out like uh i mean you'll see that you'll see like Stephen King is super left wing. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know, so you, you you see him on Twitter and all these people are like, "Fuck you! I hate your books. You're a jerk." You know, the, the cat from Pink Floyd too. Is it Roger Waters? He's he 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 he, he was like, "I don't." What did he say? Did he don't want Republicans out of his show or some shit? It was something like that. I don't know about that. There there was something he, like he, that. Yeah, if heavy. You, if you're talking about Ro- Roger Waters, he he's um. He's pro uh, Julian Assange. He's been campaigning all over the world to try to mm. get Julian Assange free. He seems to be on on the right side of, the, the, of history. Mm. I, 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 you know, I don't know all his beliefs. So if he has some weird ass crazy belief, don't be like you said he's on the right side. But as far as you know, uh, 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 Julian Assange and free speech, he seems to be on the right. But side. do you think at a certain point we should disengage and just be like, you know what, what we do is art music we make people happy these are the people that want to control everything and start division because all these conversations they create division well i go back to the beginning of the conversation like i think that's we're all humans if somebody says i want to talk about politics because this is what the fuck is on my mind and it's really bothering me and i disagree with you and i want to have that discussion have that fucking discussion yeah or you could say you know what like yeah what you're talking about is funny because remember taylor swift she didn't say fuck Republicans, fuck Democrats for a long time. She just said, you didn't know what her political beliefs was. Mm-hmm. And then they really started getting on her. Like, she must be pro-Trump. She must mm-hmm. be pro. She's not saying that her silence is, is, is you know, deadly, whatever, whatever. And then she, she finally came out and said, oh, you know, I'm doing this or that, whatever her yeah. political shit was. So that, that, I think, forcing people to have, to claim what their political belief is. That's, that's some the, bullshit. That's part of the agenda. Because if, if you don't paint your own narrative, especially with that many public eyes on you, they're going to paint their own narrative for yeah, you. I, I think people should be allowed to, hey, I'm just a musician. Yeah. I'm not educated on that. Uh, you know, but then yeah. people would get mad at me for saying that, like, what, so you'll let them be stupid and, and let this stuff happen? They have a platform. They need to speak out. Mm-hmm. But not everybody feels comfortable speaking out, especially if they're not informed. Some people sit in the studio 20 fucking hours a day, every day of the week, and they're not looking at the fuck it. They're not reading anything. They're yeah. probably in a better mental state yeah, because yeah. they're they, just they, in their they, art. They, they don't know what the hell's happening here or there. And, and not everybody has to be informed. I, th- I obviously we want to try our best to be informed, but some people live to be a boxer. Some people live to make music, mm-hmm. and, and I don't judge somebody that doesn't. I I I think if someone doesn't say anything because they're not educated, it's kind of more noble than somebody that I have to say something, even though I never Just read a talk. book yeah. and, and never educated myself in the. Well, that's the whole damn world and, right I now. Never said anything, so now I'm going to give my opinion because I have to. Or I'm going to look bad, so let me talk. Uh, you know, that's, you know, I think somebody like, yo, I don't know what the fuck 
yeah. any of that shit is. And I'm making music and I'm raising my babies and I'm doing this. So me, I, you know, I, I speak up because I've been a loud mouth fuck my whole life. So <laughs> yeah, and, and I've been wrong <laughs> on a lot of shit and I've been right on a lot of shit, you know. And, and you know, my daddy used to say that. He said, he said, yo, son. I, I was wrong in life way more than I was right. right. And uh, that fucked my head up. I, I, I said this in a tweet or something. I, I don't remember what I said exactly, but but he said that, and I was like, yo, my dad's like one of the smartest, most street knowledgeable men I know. But what do you mean he was wrong more than right? You know, and as, he, as you get older, you go, oh, shit, yeah, yeah. We, don't, we don't know nothing. We all, when we're young, we think we know all yeah. of it. So we're blah, 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 blah. Yeah. You're wrong, you're wrong. We know everything. Blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. You know, and then you get older, you go, oh, shit, my opinion five years ago was kind of fucked up. Yeah. Opinion ten years ago was fucked up. What the fuck is my opinion now if I was wrong ten so much in my now, life? Yeah. Because we don't know what the fuck we're talking about. We think we do. Mm-hmm. And, and, yeah, you're well-versed on a couple things in life, and you, you'll probably know what you're talking about about those couple things. Yeah. But there's so much information that none of us know that we all have our opinions and we think we're experts. So in life, you know, and, and even judgment issue calls, you know, you're like, my best judgment tells me to do this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And five years later, you're like, that was the it's worst the judgment. Decision. Your brain was yeah. telling you to do that, motherfucker, if you knew better. And even, even, let me take, we'll go back to the record label days, right? I, I, I'm proud of my rebellious days. I'm not saying, I'm not recoiling, I shouldn't have done it. But, I see, as you get older, you get more educated. And I was telling them in the car, I said, yo, like in the studio, rappers are smarter than me. They knew how to play the politics where say somebody that was an ignorant asshole A&R that doesn't know shit about music and you know they're a vulture, they, their energy, they come in your studio and they start telling you, well, what do you think about turning the kick lower and doing this? I would flip the fuck out. <laughs> Where, where, what, this is what, if I could talk to the old me, what I would do, I would say, turn the snare down while he's here, let him feel like he's participating. Yeah. The motherfucker leaves, put it back, he won't know the difference because he's an game. ignorant idiot. Yeah. yeah. But I was too young to know to chill the fuck out. That's the money guy, make him feel important. Yeah. yeah. And, and let him live. And, he, and, and then he lives, and, and then he, yo, and then he thinks he has input on the record. I told him to turn it. Meanwhile, it's not down anymore. Yeah. But he wouldn't know the difference because he's right. a music yeah. motherfucker. But well, back in the day, you'd be like, "Get the fuck out of my session! Like, I'll kill you!" Don't tell me shit, mother. I'll fuck you up. Don't ever come in here. You know, I'd have like record executive band. Don't you? No, nobody come in my session. That's ignorant. So you know, I'm not saying I wish I, you know, but like, like if you have. Uh, more wisdom as you get older, you realize you gotta fight certain battles. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You don't, when you're young, everything you fight every battle. Everything's a fight. Fuck that! I'm fighting every battle. You don't pick and choose. As you get older, you go, eh, let that one live. This one, okay, this one's a threat to you. You gotta fight this battle right now. You know, so that's that. That's how how, how you know. Mm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. My my main question when I brought up the politics was since you know about all the documented documented times that the, the government has lied and, and there's been conspiracies and they've conspired against us and they've told us shit they that's not true. Everything. That's that's what I'm saying. So then my point of view, honestly, is like personally, I get the biggest kick out of Trump as a character. I've gotten a big kick out of following him. The reason I don't take it serious is because I personally think that the government used Trump as a, as a big kind of springboard to create all this division. Because it, if you look at it like this, They've yeah, all Yeah, but so then why do you get a kick out of him when you see that people follow him and believe his nonsense? That's my belief that the government has used Trump to create division. But I think but it's working. Well, I think it's working on guys like you too in a different way. Because tell, the, tell me. if you really, really dislike Trump, look what they use Trump for on that angle, which was they've always lied in the papers, always lied in the news. There's always been such a thing as fake news and conspiracies. But once you got Trump saying fake news, fake news, fake news, now if you hate Trump, you're rejecting the notion that they lie to us when they always lie to us. No, but I don't do that. Okay. Like, I'll never right, for cool. one second. But Trump said fake news. That means it's not fake news. I saw that happening. Mm-hmm. Right. Like, I was almost I was almost like, fuck. Like, I seen what you're talking about. Right, right. Because I seen like, when the FBI, I seen people defending the FBI and the CIA and all of this shit and the media because Trump said bad things about them. And they were, yeah. well, that's the FBI. <laughs> it's like, yo, don't def- fuck Trump, but don't yeah. defend the fuck, but fuck the FBI, fuck the CIA, fuck the NSA, fuck all of them too. Was it a cat from the so, FBI or the CIA that you used a sample of on your track with Immortal Technique where he was admitting yeah, like, we yeah. lied about everything, that's all we yeah, did. And, and, and didn't and, you have trouble getting the music video monetized because of that, because that was in oh, there? No, no, well, what happened with that was, uh, uh, 
we wrote that song a year and a half before January 6th. Okay. Mm. And uh, um, we shot the video, I think, six months before January 6th, and then we're editing and all of this stuff. And then when it came out, um, everybody was so, oh, January 6th is... So they said that that we were promoting January 6th in the video um, and, and, or on the song. Or I don't that know. was just a way to get it taken down because yeah. the what guy it, from the CIA what, that's in the track. Whatever the fuck it is, they made it so we couldn't advertise it, couldn't monetize it, nothing. And, and like that video would have did millions and millions, mm -hmm. you know. But because of that, it kind of you know got a million and a half or something or whatever. But um, they 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 just didn't let it go in algorithms. And and then they said when I tried to monetize it, they said no, January sixth. Uh, so there was nothing that. about January sixth no, no, in the record. Nothing. Like I said, can, we wrote can you this correct song. me. Was it a guy from the CIA or the FBI? That yeah, you, you know you know what sucks is I know the guy's name. I not coming tweet, anywhere, no. tweeted him. I, I he's a piece of shit. And, uh, but he's honest. The CIA about director what they did. and uh, okay, CIA director. I forgot what the fuck his name is, but he's famous. He's really yeah, famous, yeah. And, and and I know his name. And right now I'm I'm uh, I'm starting to get you know. Honestly, I think I'm getting that Bruce Willis shit that that uh, way I can't. No, no, you got more records to make. No, you can't. No, I'm serious. Like, I, like, like they be asking me shit that like is in my life. I'm like, oh, well, I don't know. Like, I'm starting to really forget shit. Mm. Dude. What is maybe the biggest thing or a couple of the biggest things that you think the government lies to us about? Oh, at the moment? At, or in general, ever, you name ever. it. Well, historically, it's been, you know, it's, the government lies been well documented. You know that. that. You could probably name them for me, all of them shits, where, like, you know, right, right, I mean, let's go right back to my family, like the Agent Orange thing. They were right. like, that wasn't a thing that was mm -hmm. affecting us. And then all of a sudden, when when my sister was born, oh, it's one in a million. That's not Agent Orange. I wasn't around in those days. In those days, yeah. that's what they said. Oh, it's, no, it does not going to affect you guys. It's not going to bleed down to you through well, your well, genetics. Nobody even thought about it because they were kind of just chilling it out you know mm -hmm. like nobody like we don't need to really bring this up yeah. until people started talking about it like like when when my sister was born like that they, they weren't like hey we'll give you money for it it wasn't like that yeah they didn't think that it had it well they knew but uh uh this the public didn't then all of a sudden little clippings would go in the newspapers and then all of a sudden a couple people hey agent orange agent orange and then it was figured out and then the government had to tell hey guys yeah it's agent orange guys you know and, and another story i talk about too is is uh edgewood edge with arsenal where uh my my uncle richie rooftop richie rest in peace they used to you know say hey look uh uh we'll 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 uh throw mustard gas and chemicals on you and experiment on you and we'll let you have the weekends off because he was a soldier. Mm. Right? We'll let oh, you have the weekends shit. off in Brooklyn, go hang out with your lady. Was <laughs> so sure shit. So he used to go to Ed Edgewood Arsenal. You could Google the shit, and, and and they used to poison his butt, like put all this weird. And he'd be like, ah, the shit stinging. This me. was common. They did the soldiers. I don't know how common, but it, Holy it firsthand fuck. rooftop. Holy Richie fuck. Was there. Um, yeah, yeah. Anything that you can think of that you think most people push back against that, like, oh no, the government's not doing that, and it's like, dude, if you know, you know. I don't want to be an expert on a subject that I, you know, say for sure is true or mm -hmm. not. But uh, let me think about what's what's so, you know, I like the more the proven stuff the, the you know, the uh, uh, crack was being sold with the CIA, yeah. all of the stuff and, 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 you know, like all the all the famous ones that I know. But you're talking about uh, the, that, that's documented. I, I want to go with the document, the documented shit, stuff. You know? So I don't want to go conspiracy theory on this one because you, cause that's that. another thing I've been doing because I, I got caught up in a lot of conspiracy theory stuff and. You know, and you'd, you'd want to go the lane of the conspiracy theory because you figured it was it had to be true, and the government lies to us about so many things. So you'd kind of blindly follow certain conspiracies, you know. So I kind of go, you know, who am I to to say that claim is a fact? Yeah. When when I'm not there, right? I'm an expert. Yeah, yeah I could have read. I, I read tons of conspiracy stuff, and I feel like, hey, that probably might be a little something but i'm not an expert enough to to to, to for my fans to say hey this is something that i think is true you, you know i don't know if you name some i'll tell you yeah i think that's true you know but what i do think is they also distorted the idea through guys like trump because like trump will bring up shit that's like oh it's a conspiracy and if you hate trump now you think there's no such thing as conspiracies but what i think personally is we'll never really know for a fact unless you did the research and investigated yourself but in a time where the media has so much propaganda and they lie about so much if you had to bet who's more right like a david ike or the media like David Icke's probably wrong about a ton of shit, but he's got to be more right. That's like the British Alex Jones, by the way. Nah, don't I know, know who him. David Icke. Yeah, he's got to be but, way more right uh, than the media. I, I nah, nah. 
more right. I, I didn't say I, totally right. More I right see than these the media. Guys, Alex Jones, David Icke, all of them, they say some true stuff. Mm -hmm. They do. But that's important, even if but everything no, they say is no, true. No, but what, but so does so does every media outlet that we know lies. They all say true shit. Yeah. yeah. Every single outlet says real shit that's mm -hmm. real that really happened. Damn, you really do have the flip side of everything. So, so I guess he's, yeah. he's not wrong. Though. Yeah, so, I know. So, yeah, you so, do. Uh, you know, I hear some David Icke stuff. I'm like, that's came true. That's real. Yeah. But then he is a sensationalist. So you know, you'll hear. You know, you could name all the Ike theories, the reptilians, yeah. all that stuff, all that famous stuff from when I was a kid. You know, mm -hmm. like like so so. And same with with Alex Jones, where like, yo, if you really looked at there's those little clips where he was right about that. He was right about yeah, that. Yeah, which is but, valuable. But then. Well, you could do that with CNN, Fox, you know, MSNBC. You could find the true clips like yeah. this. But really, did again, happen. but I said, said less. It. I didn't say altogether uh, no, no, I, less. I don't think that. I don't think no, no. Uh, that's okay. Alex, if you disagree. Alex Jones was a sensationalist as well. You know, mm -hmm. and there was so much. Fake yeah, but he's he's nonsense. another story. He's he's too wild. That that they they pour. On he's too people, wild. I don't you know? like him. But let me ask you real quick. I am curious though. Um, are you being facetious and poking fun at conspiracy theorists when you mention reptilians in your songs? The Justin Bieber's eyes shift. In that record with Forte, oh, hey, yeah. are you being facetious? Well, I or? said in the rhyme, I forgot what the rhyme was. The rhyme you're talking about, but I said, is is it based or is it basically uh, uh, racist uh, conspiracy? I, I don't remember what the rhyme is. You're naming a rhyme that I never recited before. Like I said it in the booth, oh, okay. and I don't remember what it is. Yeah. You're talking about the one. The, do you know the rhyme? It's it's from uh, uh, the song I did with rapping Forte. Yeah, I know. It, so, it, it's so, so fresh. I, I said, I've been memorized the whole these, thing. Are these? I said, are these basic? Are these ideas based? Are they basically? Uh, takes a racist or something I said like yeah. it was questioning what the takes were mm -hmm. uh, so, okay. so if you've listened to the whole verse in context right. I don't remember the verse yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, but, I got but you could google it whoever's listening I don't, I'm not saying I don't know what it is oh I said something weird no go go it's a rapping forte song I do with Ice-T Chuck D <laughs> he's talking about the first verse on that one but I just don't remember oh, okay. because it's a brand new song that just dropped and I don't know like I usually memorize my songs if we shoot a video for it yeah. or if I do it live or if I listen to it a lot, but I, that, that's right. when I and and it's the same thing on another recent um, feature you did uh, just over the past year or so. The plot thickens, passports and COVID restrictions. Yeah, what, yeah. What were you getting at towards that? Well, that's true. They were fucking restricting us from traveling. They were like, like, like don't go into that clothing store. You know, like, like you know, don't go in the public. Yeah, yeah. They, they were going. They They're were also going closing stores early, like like COVID yeah, falls yeah. asleep see, at a certain see, time. But here's the thing: is this is this also the left and right stuff? You know, you know what I mean? COVID was a real thing. But the way the left was pushing it, so, so fucking extreme, Democrat, whatever, extreme, and and locking people in their houses and all of this shit, you know, that was turning people to the other side where they're like, none of it's real, none of it's yeah. real. Like there was no in between. Nobody could have like a realistic take. Yeah, that's when you said, can you name one? Actually, that's one that I, I would be comfortable naming because you couldn't talk about it two years ago, but today you can. Yeah, I, I think that COVID was, was large. I do think it was largely a conspiracy. Not that it wasn't real, but just the main thing that the way the narrative changed constantly over the, over the course of two years, initially March, 2020, this is going to kill everybody by... April, I'm like, I know a hundred people that survived it. I'm getting back to real life. They're like, no, 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 everything you do. So, but I, I, the problem is that's what they always do though. Anytime there's a mm -hmm. tragedy or something that they could scare the public with, they're going to use and it. they ride it as the, long the as we'll fear, tolerate the, the it. Fear mongering will, will oh, that's how they, that's, it doesn't matter what it is. And that's like, oh, okay. Lies of the government, um, from the from the beginning yeah every war that we're in is based on lies yeah. and and you know this is basically you know it sounds cliche but it's true but like yeah. go, go into any war that we have ever been in and where we lost hundreds of thousands of our people our children's our babies 17 year old boys 18 year old boys out there getting their fucking faces blown off for shit that wasn't even real mm -hmm. and, and and to keep the perpetual war machine going and this is something i say often too it's like we're the United States of America. We're the taxpayers, right? Yeah. How many wars are we in right now? How many How many countries are we invading right now? Do you know? At the moment, because we're no. support, we're pretty enlightened, right? Yeah. I don't know. She I don't she, know. she got an answer. What, what, Is it what, two? What? It's three. Uh, no, it's way I more see. than three. <laughs> we're, we're in like mad countries right now, yeah. blowing shit up Holy all fuck. over the world, and, and, and like Google, who are we in war with right now? And and wow. the, our own country. Doesn't like the average person, or shouldn't you know? You're the taxpayer. Who are you blowing up right now? Who are you invading yeah, right, right now? What countries are we in? And none of us know. Yeah. But we know, 
oh, there's an argument about a swimmer. She she's she's transgender or yeah. or CRT yeah. is right. in our school scaring us or or this you know like like they know about that, but we can't even say who are we murdering all over the world. Yeah. So so uh, um as as far as the lies, it's like, and then you say, why are we at war with this? Why are we at war with this? Uh, what was the Assad gassing thing uh, a few years back? That was that was yeah. a, a, a see. I can't say for a fact. But my belief was that that was a, a that was a conspiracy, a lie mm -hmm. that they they say, oh, he had no. permission to uh, to to go after Assad. Let's get the boom, boom, boom. And and you know we know the weapons of mass destruction is mm -hmm. the most famous one there is. Yeah. But, you know, like no matter what the war or Viet, Viet, Vietnam, why were we in Vietnam? Why were we there? Mm -hmm. Do you know why were we murdering people? Like they tell us narratives, but and none of them are true. Yeah. yeah. And the people go, where are you, in USA? We must protect our own. Well, who who the fuck were we? What was the threat? Tell me what the Iraqi uniform looked like. Don't worry, I'll wait. Yeah, that they don't have an army. We're killing them. Yeah. We're killing their exactly. people. Um, I, I want to ask you real quick, just because of time. Um, do you do you identify with the left more than with the right? No. Okay. Uh, no. 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 Maybe the left a but, little more, but, but not the Democrats. The and Demo not the, the, the liberals Democrats, and the, the Democrats are the fucking scum of the earth, you mm -hmm. know. And Republicans are scum of the earth too. Do you? But but it's liberal. Left, Sometimes, well, here's the thing: is there were definitely times where I came up and, and I fell for you know uh, Americana propaganda with mm -hmm. the best. You know, where I came up in a military family and I believed some of that stuff. But then, like I said, they say, "Oh, we can't have health care here because we don't have enough money. We can't have college here. We can't have this. Where are we going to get the money from?" And then I go to Germany, and the tax, they go, but the taxes are higher. That's why. It's not that much higher. It's mm -hmm. like 5% higher, and everyone gets free health care. Everyone gets free college if you want to go. If you're having mental illness, you could take six months off of work and chill. They yeah. take care of their people. There's no homeless situation. Like, mm -hmm. we're the richest country on the planet, and there's homeless people all over. No, they don't care. Take care. They don't care. These people are fucking dying, can't eat. But And then you go to a country where the, 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 the tax is a little bit higher and they take care of their entire country. Mm. So so then you go, maybe the lefty policies are the shit, yeah. you know? So you don't know. But, uh, you know, I, mean, I mean, you do know, actually. But, but you know, so you shift back and forth. You try to educate yourself and you learn some things. But then on the flip side, with the right, they did this thing where they would be like, free speech. We want everyone to talk. We want everyone to talk, so you fall for that. You're like, yes, mm -hmm. we want everyone to be able to have a free voice. But then they go, Elon Musk is the one freeing us, and then they don't care when he's censoring lefties, you know? We long ago seem to have gotten over this public enemy so shocking, NWA so shocking, Marilyn Manson, Ozzy Osbourne, it's too shocking. And then we won that battle, it seemed, where it was like, if it's in music, it's whatever the fuck, it's just art, it's subjective. In the 90s, they're pressing Sylvester Stallone and Arnold Schwarzenegger, aren't these movies too violent? And they're saying, well, it mirrors reality. If it didn't happen in the real world, we wouldn't have had to make a movie about it, so reality's violent, don't hurt us. And then we were all kind of for a little while okay with dirty rap records rock and roll that's like got devil worshipping and shit and then uh, the movies that were too violent it seems like it's all coming back and how does it all all this madness how does it correlate to your song hate speech and what were you trying to get at with that well let's go back to what you you said a lot, whole lot of stuff though mm -hmm. and you're right a lot of the left will say, oh, don't say this word because that's offensive. Mm -hmm. Don't do that. That's going to hurt someone's feeling, which is bullshit. Art, let motherfuckers say whatever the fuck you want. But you're saying that it was the right that used to be that way. But Tipper Gore was a Democrat, you know, and she was the main one in charge of, you know. But, but there was a lot of right conservatives during that time, too. But Tipper Gore and Al Gore, you know, uh, uh, you know, and Al Gore Sr. was a fucking Ku Klux Klan member, all of that shit. You know? Oh, no shit. Yeah, of course. Yeah. But, but it, it, we say, oh, now it's the left. Who the fuck freaks out when uh, Cardi B's showing her wet ass pussy? Yeah. It's the fucking right. Who the fuck freaks out when Little Nas X is gay in front of people? It's the fucking right. Mm -hmm. So you want to say the left's doing it? Yes, they are doing it. That's true. And I think they're all fucking wrong. But it's not like the right isn't doing it because because they were acting like they weren't doing it. That And, and you, you fall for it sometimes because when you have, yeah, the lefties are going too crazy saying don't say this, don't say that, don't say that, which is true. So you go, oh, what about the right? But then, but then when the right gets the opportunity, they'll say those books aren't good for the kids. This book, is, don't, don't put this book. And even people listening now, they'll go like, well, they'll use the gender queer book as as the main one. But that's the fear mongering shit. They got the one book with the fucking graphic images. 
but then they don't talk about the 186 other books that are on on black issues and and and, and human rights issues and, and and gender issues. They don't bring that up. I, They'll bring up the fucking graphic I, one book and not know the name of any other book that they let that they're letting fucking uh, yo. They're not doing that in other countries. And you look at at the state by state, it's like that redneck state's doing it, number one. Yeah. That redneck state, number two, is doing it, number They're the ones banning the books in the school. I kind of have an answer to that, Good, though. good, tell me. It, well, it's, it's a nuanced thing. It's that the left is more pro-female, and I think right now the right is a little bit pro-male. So I, it seems to me that, like, okay, so the conservatives get mad about wet-ass pussy, but the left... What about get, the trans, but, transgender beer can? Ah! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. yeah, but and, and the left will get more. I think the left is more. I'm trying to relate it to to what you do. I think the left is more like in the social justice. I shouldn't say the left. I should say the radical social justice warriors. They're the ones about the feelings and what's the dirty shit you said on the rap record. I think they're the ones more likely to attack in particular like a male rapper or a controversial male figure. Like what did he say in the record? What did they do in the movies? Um, and that seemed to be well, well, what you were getting little, at with little, hate speech. Lil Nas X is a male rapper. And when he did the satanic thing, satanic yeah. panic went all into, he did like a gay Satan video and it felt like 1986 over again. Like Satan, they're coming for your kids with Satan. You made ah! a good point about that, that the, you know the I mean? rock records do it. But what I'm trying to ask about hate speech is when I heard that song, to me, it was like, I love a song like this because I get the feeling of it. All this like arguing over what's too offensive and what shouldn't be in art and everything. It just makes you want to piss them all off and go, fuck it. I'll say exactly. everything fucked up and that I can what, say. Well, you're talking about Trump. Remember Trump said that that he thinks if you burn a flag, you should do a year in fucking prison. So so that's the freedom of speech we're talking about that the right has? Mm. <laughs> they put lock, lock somebody in a fucking cage for burning a flag. fucking piece of cloth? Yeah. yeah. You know? So that's why I said I burn, uh, I burn flags. I grab my dick during the national mm. anthem. Mm. I, 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 I fat shame a fat kid and blame his fat fuck parents. Or, 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 I forgot what the lyric was. but I was So that was going after the right and going after the left in the same sentence. Okay. You know what I mean? So to you... Because like, like if you call a fat kid a fat kid, the left... Oh, and Trump like save America don't burn the flag you know so they're both cunt ass pussy motherfuckers mm. so, I was gonna say so to you it's not a left or right thing it's a artistic freedom thing versus all the talking heads that say like this is too dirty or this is too bad and it shouldn't be an art because even um, I think oftentimes like if you sit down and you have like a conversation about like women that rub people the wrong way it rubs people a lot worse than music but then sometimes people even get mad about it in music I actually remember from your Jesse Lee Peterson interview you made a good point that like anybody should be able to say on a record like fuck this bitch fuck that because maybe you're just expressing anger yeah, it's and true. it's just I, I an agree. expression I agree with that yeah I think say an angry teen just his girlfriend had sex with somebody. He's heartbroken. He's insecure. Mm. And he goes, "Fuck bitches! I'll kill a bitch! Fuck, fuck, fuck!" Let him do it. Yeah. If he's out there fucking and killing a bitch, then oh shit, that's that's, that's not. Different. I'd right. rather have him say some shit on a record. Just like in a horror gore movie, when I was a kid, they'd be like, you know, maniac Joe Spinell. He gets the hooker, chokes her, cuts her throat, and, and they they were protesting that all over the streets. This is m m uh, uh, misogyny and boom, 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 yeah. boom, 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 boom. That you know, but it's art. And nobody killed anybody off of that shit. And if anybody's gonna listen, play a video game or, or listen to a rap song or watch a horror movie and they're gonna do something crazy, that's because they're crazy. Yeah, yeah. And, and horror it's movies not didn't on the exist. Itself. Horror movies and, and porn and none of this shit existed when people were raping and killing all over the planet for decades yeah. and centuries. Mm -hmm. So stop blaming it on art yeah, when the shit existed since the beginning yeah. of the fucking times. Grand Theft Auto isn't going to make you jump off the fucking roof and kill yourself. If if you are, it's because you're a crazy motherfucker yeah. or, or you have your own emotional issues. Stop blaming art. They've been doing that since forever. Yeah. So if you're on the side of the argument where you believe in the, the, the right now moral panic you've got to step back and look at that and go like that's my brain being fucking propagandized you know, you know what i mean i don't think he could have said it any better than that i realize i derail you when i make it a left versus right thing because the the main point is that there's a freedom of expression and there's people on the right you, you're right there's people on the right and the left that are like fuck it this will be harmful and we always say that because for the longest times that was our era when we were when we were kids grand theft autos it's gonna make kids go be violent and most of those kids were too busy in the fucking house hooked on the video <laughs> games to ever go out yeah, and be violent yeah, yeah. um you've been a fantastic guest all right um I, I just want to wrap up by saying this because 
I feel like this fucking record was made for me. I never thought I would see R.A., Chuck D., Rappin' Forte. Um, it's nice that Ice-T is on there, but for me, just those three, I'm like, that's three out of my top five personally, and I'm like the biggest Rappin' Forte fan, and he's one of the few guys that's so obscure, maybe especially on the East Coast, and to see that in Times Square, if I had walked through Times Square randomly on that day, I would have flipped the fuck out because I'm always like, oh, everybody's forgotten about all my favorite rappers, and the kids are in the mumble rap and the stupid shit and I look up and it's fucking Forte in, in R.A. Yeah, in Times shout Square. out to Rap and Forte. He's, he's the he's fucking been a real, best. real good guy. And, and also, he was patient with me. He was trying to get that verse from me and I was in the middle of touring and, and dad life and I was trying to get he's the greatest. shit recorded and... and I took too long, and finally I said, "What's your deadline? Deadline?" And he gave it to me, and I, and I reached. I said, "I'll get, I'll get, I'll get it done for you, brother." And mm -hmm. he's a really good guy. Shout out to Rapping Forte. Made some legendary hip hop music. Mm -hmm. Had some huge hit songs. Yeah. And he's a he's he's like a good person. Mm -hmm. I, I totally forgot. You know, when I was sitting with Professor Griff, I was asking him. I said, "Because you're so much older than Pac, w we're young guys, so Pac is a legend to us." I said, "But around the time that you knew Pac, was it just like, oh, you know, I've been in the game for a minute. He's kind." Of just a, a young kid that's starting out, and he said, "Honestly, yeah, that's of how we that's how we yeah, looked at him." Of course, Pac, um, Pac, <laughs> Pac compared the Public Enemy, and, and when Pac was on the right. call, Public Enemy was like the most iconic fucking group is, on the planet. Yeah. So, is that how you felt when you met Mac Miller? Is it like I I don't really know much of his stuff. He's a young guy that's coming up, or that's how I felt when I I met all the '90s legends that you guys think are legends. Like to me, they were just my peers. Like mm -hmm. there's none nobody in the '90s that I was like, oh shit, I met them. It was more like. When I met my '80s icons, you know, mm -hmm. like 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 I'm simple with that stuff. Like when Kaz comes out, I'm like, oh my, Shaw Rock came, ah, like that's I'm grouping out. My, my man Bullet will tell you, he'll say, yo, look, I got a text from fucking MC Shan, you know, like whatever the fuck it is. Yeah. Like those are my guys. That's how it was but, but, when but, we got but, text but, from you. You know, like 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 Biggie, Wu Tang, Mob, all of them, they're icons. But at the time, I, I just looked at them, oh peers, you know, I was, yeah. like, oh my god, I was, you know. Cause it was my the same era as me. Yeah. Just like I imagine, you know, Kaz getting a uh, well, they didn't have text back then, but Kaz calling Melly. It wasn't like oh shit. It was like yo, these are my peers. Mm. You know, they they were the same. What era. was Mac like? Well, Mac, I didn't know. Uh, what happened was my like I said, my niece Jesse Jane. Shout out to Jesse Jane. She's my merch girl, uh, and she's the best niece in the fucking world. Uh, um, been an angel her whole fucking life. It's crazy, but but um. She was a big fan of Mac Miller, and she saw that a tour was announced, uh, a festival, the Rhyme Sayers Fest that mm -hmm. Atmosphere put together, that me and Mac Miller were on the same card. So she said, and that that year was great because Sean Price was there, mm -hmm. all the old school heads, Diamond D, all of us was there too, and then the newer school cats were there. But um, but she said, "Yo, can I meet Mac Miller?" So I said, "You know what? I don't know the guy." But let me hit up. So I just did a couple of messages to some people like, yo, who knows Mac personally? Like out of the people I knew and somebody knew him. So I said, yo, can you text them or message them and say, hey, can you take a five minute time uh, where my niece could go meet Mac and say hi to him and take a picture? And and, and so I so because I didn't want to fly her to, to Minneapolis or wherever the tour mm -hmm. show, show was. Just to like see a performance, I said, you know, if I'm gonna fly her out, let him meet the guy. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. so Max people was like, yeah, of course, already, no doubt. So you know, I, I took him. You know, he came out. Hey, he talked to her for a few minutes, and they took the pitch. And she, you know, so you know, she's from that era. So that's like one of the best moments. Of, oh, when I met Mac, she still tweets. Well, this is me and Mac Miller. You know, yeah. so it's a big deal to her. You know. And, and on the same tip, I'm almost surprised <laughs> that um you didn't do more with Hobson because that seems like such a perfect lineup. What was it like working with him? Well, the Hobson thing, you know, I don't, it's... The, was that like a brief thing, kind of here and gone, like he did the record and kept nah, moving? You, you know, what happened was uh, I wasn't up on the internet that good, you know? I, yeah. I was like, I thought my era, like, G-Rat, who the fuck's going to be talking to people on the internet? You know, it's, it's yeah. like early in the game. <laughs> and, and there's a girl named Nova. Do you know who Nova is? She's down with, she directs all the Tom McDonald's uh, videos and stuff. Oh, and yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. So she was staying staying in Harlem with me, and she was the one that was like up on you know all of that shit. And she started a website for me, like because she did that for time. Like she, you know, she does all of that mm -hmm. stuff. So she was smarter than me with that shit. So she started a website, started this, boom boom, started me doing like little contests and all of this shit. Because I'm like, nah, fuck that. I'm a rapper. I don't, you know, you know. But she she was smarter. So uh, and in fact, even back then, she was a rapper. And she would say like, 
she would go argue with her friends on Facebook and she, like, like her fans on yeah. Facebook. And I'd be like, girl, you're supposed to be the superstar. Don't do all of that. Yeah. And but she was smarter than me. She said, nah, that's what you're supposed to do. And that's how you build engagement. Yeah, you, yeah. You know? But I didn't know that. I'm the old guy, you know? Mm -hmm. So so I learned from her with that, where 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 uh and Hobson, she built a website for me and Hobson's people, Dame. You know, Dame who All right, yeah, that was you. the big beef with it. He had hit me up and said, Yo, I'm starting this thing where uh, you know, all the people at our level independently get together and we all kind of post about our music. Let's get together. I want to start this union of like independent artists. And I didn't know who Hobson was, but he was huge at the time, but I didn't know. Mm -hmm. or, or he wasn't maybe huge, but like millions of views, you know, like he wasn't like later on, he got really huge. Yeah. But uh, so I said, yeah, that sounds like something dope, whatever, whatever you want to do. So we got on the phone with Dame and that's how I uh, started the relationship with Hobson. I just was like, cool, you know, so, so, and then, I, and then Dame said like, yo, out of all the OGs, like young cats were receptive to me trying to do that, but like yeah. all the o older cats, <clears throat> That none of them fucked with me on it. You were the only one. That really? Mm. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, because it was new. It was new. He was coming up yeah. with this new concept of like everybody uniting and they. Okay. And, yo, funk volume was revolutionary with this digital age. This is yeah. That was some new shit that yeah. Like, like I looked at Dame and Hop. If they didn't break up, they was like to me. It was like almost like a digital Puffy and Big type of shit, but not on that level. Yeah, well, that yeah, level. yeah, but, but it's a but decent comparison. Way, the way. They just dominated. And then they invited me to a show and they'd be like, yo, if you filming this, tag us, put it on the internet, blah, 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 blah. And, and people would be tag, 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 tag. Like they was just dominating shit. Yeah. And it got to the point where Hobson was getting 100 million views on a fucking video because they they dominated the digital campaign like way. But, and, and I was yeah. late to the game on all of that. And in fact, uh, ha, uh, Dame from from uh, from Funk Volume, Volume, Hobson, the guy that helped Hobson blow up, he's the one who taught me social media. Mm. He was like, "Yo, no shit, you're like this legendary ass artist, and none of your fans even know about any of your shit." And I'm like, "So, so what do I do?" He's like, "Yo, I know kids that aren't even known that have better followers than you. What the fuck you do?" So yeah. he coached me. He said, "Yo, you got to be on it more. You got to do something personal once in a while, a photo here, a video, something that's kind of asking the fans questions, boom boom." Mm -hmm. And and then he told the thing I was telling over not to do. He told me, "No, engagement, this that." And then all of a sudden my 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 uh Facebook page went from like, you know, 5,000, 10,000, 20,000, 100,000, 150 three, three, just by yeah. doing what Dame told me to do. And I was like, think, you know, it's not like a superstar one millions or something, yeah. but it's like hundreds of hundreds of hundreds of thousands of people oh, yeah. on the page. And that was because one of the young young digital kings mm -hmm. came and and said, "Look, this is what you got to do." And he kind of gave me a little bit of uh, insight to how to oh, And God. I'm one of the more you know, out of the old school cats, Open I'm one of the more digital, uh, you know, like my online presence is, is a lot stronger than a lot of my mm. peers. Yeah. The majority of my old school peers, you know, so. I, I know I'm dragging this out. I could talk to you all night. I just got one more question, then we're going to wrap up, okay? Yeah. Oh, is that, oh, I thought that was the wrap up sign. Like, yes, let's go, let's go. Oh, you, you took Lala? <laughs> oh. um, no, one last, one last thing that I'll definitely wrap up. But, uh, you know, I met, I met Chuck D and Flavor Flav when I was 14 was like one of the greatest nights of my life. I tell people all the time, they were so friendly, they were so cool. Chuck is the goat friendly. Like, I, like No shit. He's so strong in, on record and, yeah. and militant and hard and, you know, uh, uh, and, but he's just the dopest human and opens his arms to everybody. He's like this loving ass dude. Yeah, tell me, about, tell me about your relationship with him. Cause that's 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 the ultimate thing to come up on Public Enemy and now like is would, is Chuck a personal friend or just someone like you kind of do business with from time to time? Well, Chuck, it's kind of like all of us, like how he just embraces hip hop. So I'm not like super. I've been to his house with the studio with with Ugh, Shockley in the basement. So and all that stuff. holy fuck! And when when I was at the house, you know, what was there was Kid Creole mm. from the Furious Five, yeah. Yeah. who's now in jail for stabbing the yeah. homeless guy. Mm. They they gave him the guilty. So, uh, wow. you know, he was walking to work and the guy approached him and, and, and whatever, you know, but they gave him a guilty plea, uh, guilty. Uh, so he's in jail for murder right now. But he was there and he's a little, little guy, little nice guy. But, but, um, but, uh, yeah, so Chuck, it's just how he is with everybody. Like Brother Ali, he'll embrace. He, like, yeah. he likes a Brother Ali song. He'll hit up. Yo, I really love what you're doing for hip hop. You know, or the, it don't even got to be somebody at Ali's level or my level. It could be just like somebody who makes a dope song and yeah. be like, "Yo, I'm putting this on my station. Yeah, I love what you're doing." So, you know, I 
all of a sudden Chuck had his radio show and he'd be shouting me out like, yeah, and the legend, he called me like the legendary R rated rugged man. And Chuck D's the legendary, you know, yeah. I can't do his mm-hmm. voice. I was like, yo, Chuck D's called me a legend on the fucking radio show. What yeah. the fuck? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. And, and so so that's how, you know, and I I, I sent him like a fanboy message probably 20 years ago. And I, I gave him all my lyrical references I had to, ch- I said, yo, I've been, I'm, yeah. and he hit me back like, yo, I'm a fan watching you from the stands, boy, like you are my, you know, so. so That's crazy. So it was just out of a respecting how we became cool and then we kept in touch. And when I met him, he's just open arms, hugs. Yeah. Why didn't you end up having Chuck do a verse on the last record? Why was it this kind of interlude Well, because the song was done and I had the three verses. The song was basically done and the, the I wanted a chorus and then I was like, you know, what would fit here? I'm like, maybe I should just talk. And I was like, maybe I should do a spoken word. Maybe I should do a scratch. And I'm like, yo, Chuck D, if he would say some fly shit in these three parts. Yeah, he's a fan of the spoken word. That fucking song is done and yeah. it's a masterpiece, you know? So I hit up Chuck and he did it. I was like, oh shit, he did it. So so that that's <laughs> why it was the song was done. So so uh yeah, you know, maybe I should have did a different song with a verse, but that particular song just needed like mm-hmm. some dope knowledge drop and spoken word shit in some places. And I said, nobody could do that better than Chuck. And Chuck perfect. said, yes. So, yeah. Well, all right. Thank you so much for coming in. The latest record, All My Heroes Are Dead, an absolute masterclass in hip hop. You got to hear it if you haven't heard it. You got to look at RA's other interviews if you haven't heard it. Thank you so much for coming in. Yeah, and uh, fuck all that bullshit. Go buy the new little Yachty. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> He's not even around anymore, all right? I don't have any. I have no. It's the end of that. I have no idea what anybody is anymore. This <laughs> has been Red Pill Lions Podcast. We'll catch you next Later. time.